This Rengar is missing something. Can you tell what it is? If you answered target champions only keybind, you would be correct. People think that working in the gaming industry is easy. You sit around all day doing a whole lot of nothing, just playing games and sometimes talking about them. Wrong. To teach League of Legends, well, we have to get into ELO hell to find out what's going wrong in the ELOs you actually play in. This means we have to watch stuff like this. So we tasked our community to submit the worst plays they've seen all week as well. To make something fun for you guys to watch while also having some tips along the way so you never look like whatever it is you're about to see in this video. This is a fun video that'll have some tips and doesn't reduce the real guides that you'll receive. So we may make this a weekly series if you guys like it, so be sure to let us know in the comments below if you do. Anyway, this is the 5 worst plays we've seen all week. Coming in at number 5, we're jumping into Heimerdinger vs Malzahar. They both limp away after scrapping and then… A valiant effort from Heimer to try and finish off Malzahar with his jungler. So how do I avoid this happening to me? Absolutely no one asked. Well obviously don't stand near Mal's E on one health, but you should already know that. Malzahar Voidlings deal way more damage on targets that are affected by his E, 300% more to be exact. We doubt Heimer knew about this and got caught off guard by those steroid infused Voidlings and paid the price. Now he's on video. So what elo do you think this game is? Iron, Bronze, Silver, Gold, or Platinum? We'll reveal all the elos at the end of the video, so stick around since you're in for a surprise. For number 4, we're in the top lane with Garen. Perhaps he locked it in after watching our top 3 low elo picks for every roll. But it doesn't matter what champion you're on if you do this. Okay, jokes aside, I think we've all died like this at some point in the top lane. This Garen just happened to get caught on camera. So what to do when you messed up as a huge wave crashes into your tower? Well, first, expect to get dove. If you position in this area here, your opponent has far more ground to cover to retreat safely from tower shots. If you position like this Garen did, the Renekton can easily pull back with much less risk of dying to the tower. Beyond that, Garen was just about to hit level 3 and could have maybe turned this around with his W, so patience was key. But who cares, he pulls things back just moments later with this insane outplay. For number 3, we're back to the mid lane. We see support Lulu who found a sweet roam timing onto this poor Zerith. Despite their combined efforts, it somehow wasn't enough to take down this mid lane Emperor. But whose fault was it that this play went so poorly? Well, we think they both should accept some equal blame. The takeaway here for you pesky supports and junglers is not to force ganks if your teammates are low and there's a big wave. It's super unlikely to work out unless you can solo them, which Lulu definitely cannot. So it's her fault for forcing it, but Annie blew her stun on the wave and then gave in to peer pressure. And at number 2, we have Zareth making his way into the bot lane. He starts things off with a tragic W, only to make up for it with a well-placed stun. Then he charges up his Q for that spicy zero extra damage. Inspired by the last dance, he attempts the in-your-face dunk, only to be fouled right back to the fountain. Our tips for Zareth would be to actually read your abilities. There's no reason to charge up his Q, as it only gives him extra range, not damage. Also, when it comes to long range or even global abilities like Zareth and Karthus R, you may as well just step back to safety before casting. Unless you're under some sort of time constraint, there's really no reason not to. For our final clip at number 1, we have Lee grouping up with his team looking for an engage. They spot the enemy team over the wall and Lee sees his moment to shine. He ward hops over, flashes to reposition. Well played by Lee, he saw his Caitlyn slightly out of position and rectified the situation. For all the aspiring Lee Sin players out there, you should avoid insecting without your Q at this range whenever possible. Lee's Q was about to come up as he went in. If he waited 0.5 seconds, he could Q Kane, ward hop behind Caitlyn and then still have flash afterwards. W flash kick is a perfectly fine combo, but much more effective when your opponent is closer to you and you can actually get behind them. Alright, let's finally reveal the elo of today's star players. 
First up, we have Heimerdinger in gold. Secondly, we have our Garen Smurf, who's in silver, but surely not for long. Third, the Romine Lulu and Annie are in gold. Fourth, the Xerath support is in silver. And finally, Lee Sin is currently platinum. How many ELOs did you get right? Let us know which surprised you the most. For us, it had to be the Garen. That immediate triple kill response after dying at his tower was too good for that guy to be in silver. Thanks for watching and be sure to let us know what you thought of this content type. The goal is just to provide some random tips while having some fun watching the worst of low elo plays. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.